Yes, brothers and sisters, special guest number six on the Danny Christie show, my man, Dean Lynch Ward. Yes, Dan Al Springs, I mate. Sal, mate, and yourself. Good stuff, mate. Good Pleasure stuff. to meet you again, mate. Pleasure, like always. In a different capacity this yeah. time, mate, yeah? Same environment, different capacity. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. Um, <clears throat> obviously, um, you know, the name and the channel, and that's getting a bit of attention on the internet at present. And I just want to give uh, the viewers and, you know, followers a bit of an insight into the man himself. Yeah, yeah. So I've got a particular style with my podcasts, mate, so we're going to go back to the start. I'm going to go where you were born, what your childhood was like growing up, relationship with your mum and dad, you know, and take us up, take us up till about, you know, when you were 10 year old, mate, how was life? Life was pretty much, see, for me, life was pretty much all right. So up to the age of, I'd say about 10, we was on the road a lot, you know, so my dad coming from Glasgow, my mum being Manchester based, um, obviously with the background of my father, going into like the travelling community stuff. I was, we was pretty much up and down, we never kind of stabled, so we got to around about, I spent about eight years old, my mum and dad split up, you know what I mean, so that's one for me. From the age of eight till I'd say about 17, you know, I was, I was grounded in certain aspects, but I was all over at the same time. So in terms of, when I say grounded, I was grounded in terms of respect for my mother and my father. So my dad at that time went through a bad drink problem, you know what I mean, for a good few years. Yeah. Going back to him being a bit of a drinker and that, it wasn't that I was treated bad at home, I was treated bad with my mother. It just set me on the, on, on the path where, Every day I went out of the house, it broke my mother's heart because yeah. you never knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. I was never disrespectful to my elders or people, but I was a cunt in terms of if, if it was out there and someone threw it on my toes at that time, I was all in. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying I, I won every scrape, but I was involved in a lot, you know what I mean? And yeah. that's kind of, and that's pretty much where it was. And I got to around about, I was 12 years old. And then obviously, in terms of the background of my dad, I mean, the dad's side of the family coming from like, there was all boxers, not that there was great pros or anything like that. And then my grandfather, my mother's side was a boxer. Um, Boxing's in the blood, yeah. Boxing was always come down. So if you take it back to like, my great, great grandfather was a guy called Benny Lynch, first Scottish uh, lightweight champion. Yeah. And then if you go back to my mother's side, my great grandfather was a man called Dave Ward from Toome. Um, he was the, how can I kind of put it? He was the, the only king of the travellers. Yeah. He was never beat. And he died as a young man lifting a rock. He split his arteries in Southern Ireland. He was lifting a rock, he was moving a rock, he split his arteries and died. And then obviously it's come down from generations to generations. So in terms of boxing for me, going into the fight game as a young boy, I was never committed the way I should have been committed. In terms of, for me, it was go to the gym three days a week as an amateur. And another three days a week, I'm on the shots with the boys, getting stoned, robbing a car. Yeah. It's, it's life, do you know what I mean? And I'm not gonna say it's life growing up in North Manchester, it's life growing up in any city, it's no, yeah. It's no different. There was no ego about me or anything. I've been the same. I've, I've matured now as I've got older. Yeah. But I was the same man then with the same mindset. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. How it was for me, I never took anything in life really seriously until I've got older. I was just taking. You take each day as it comes because you, you're living. You're living there on the edge, but you, you don't realise now, don't you? Yeah, but yeah. you don't realise how you're living. Do you understand what I mean? It's just it was a way of life. But then you got to remember, I was in and out of jail from the age of fifteen onwards. Do you know what I mean? Small sentences couple of months here, a couple of months there, and then you're getting older, you, your crimes get a bit more serious. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So the sentences get more a bit a bit more stern. Yes, they do. And um, did prison really change me? Do you know if I sound an idiot saying it didn't? It didn't. Do you know what I mean? It's, doesn't, mate. It doesn't it's what's work. over there that changed me. Do you know what I mean? That's what that's what changed me, my kids and stuff like that. And that was pretty much, that's giving me a, giving you a summary of an outline of me, but we'll go into yeah. depth about certain things. But that's kind of where yes, mate. I got to and where I'm at now. Do you know what I mean? And yes, mate. What about work and that? A lot of the you know, lads in the travelling community are out working young, aren't they? You know, they're, they're out, yeah, work, they're well, out, 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 out working young, and I don't mean on the streets. You know, they're out, they're out hustling, bustling, yeah, you know, I mean, well, canvassing. You're right, because like I said, you know, we, we was out with my dad, and uh, my dad's twin brother, my uncle, has passed away. God rest his soul. He passed away last year. My dad's twin brother, they were roofers. So obviously, we've been out from the age of like, and I'm not just exaggerating, from like nine years of age. Yeah. You know, we was out working a Saturday and a Sunday, and and so forth and obviously now I work as a roofer with my dad yeah you know what I mean but that's we've been doing that from an early age and we was on the hustle and bustle man. do you know yeah. we, we uh -huh. was out there if there was so much we used to get the old um like years ago we used to get like the to sponsor they'd say like your boxing gym was a sponsor but it was a blag yeah and you go around can you sponsor <laughs> the sign and give you 50p's yeah. we don't know how that you know I yeah. grew up working on the markets I grew up we grew up on the hustle do you know what I mean and yes man it was a way for us it's not I wouldn't even really say it was a travel thing it's just a case of 
the way we start to grow up. So yeah. now, as I grow up, looking back, it is a traveller thing. But for me, my dad didn't teach us no different. He yeah. was just, you know, was that get on the grind. You the know, way it and, was, yeah. You know, and like I said, I mean, I didn't learn to read and write till a late age. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. it just wasn't the way that I was taught. Do you know what I mean? Where seems to, seems to be aware. Sorry to interrupt you there. Man. Seems yeah. to be aware there, and a lot of the lads in the travelling community, you know, they're all they can, you know, they're all turn, you know, that it's in the blood, you know, to yeah. spin a pound note. You know, you don't see many lads in the travelling community with an empty pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean, but the great deal of them, uh, you know, too literate. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's a sad truth, and I'm not calling them any kind of anything, yeah. but it seems no. to be a sad truth. You know, they avoid school and they're out there earning, you know, earning pull, the coin, pulling a few quid. Absolutely. Well, do you know what it was? See, my my so my grandfather um, on my on my father's side, he was from Glasgow. He's called the Weird Man for Bridgetown, Jimmy Lynch. He was called him Kipper. He was always fishing. Now my grandfather left school at the age of twelve because he was back then times in Glasgow. Obviously, he'd come from Ireland, he'd travelled from Ireland. With yeah, his father and stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, when they was in Glasgow at that time, with him being a Catholic as well, religion was quite stern. So when they got to, I think it was 14, because of being a Catholic, it would either get a job or leave school. They wouldn't let them finish school at that time. Mm-hmm. Not many, a lot of people know this. Yeah. So my granddad couldn't read or write himself. And he was an hard working man up till he died at the age of 87. Do you know what I mean? And he was going up and down, up and, up and down roofs still. Yeah. Got past 82. Yeah, he weren't a wealthy man, but everything he had, he worked hard for. Yeah. And he couldn't read all right, do you know what I mean? It was uh-huh. just the same where, so when I was growing up now, <clears throat> he made sure education for his sons was important yeah. on my father's side. So all of them had been to school and stuff. Yeah. So my dad was quite firm with me because I couldn't read all right, but I wasn't interested, do you yeah. know what I mean? And uh-huh. I used to go to the boxing gym and I'd get spoke about of people like my coach here, uh, Ensley Bingham. I want to give him a shout out. So, uh, Ensley Bingham, yeah. He was my coach, he taught me everything I know. I was his first ever prodigy, you yeah. know, and he, you know, anyone can ring him and say that he was the first man uh, I trained at the Champs Cup my side. Yeah. So basically, what happened now, they had Ensley put it all into me and had I hoped so I'm about that time. I had no interest in anything, just life. You yeah. know, I'm out on the bustle, I'm on the razzle, I'm out, I'm earning and yeah. a coin, I'm out partying, and that was that's what it was for me for it all the way through. Do I regret it? Well, no, because I can say I've lived my life. I will waddle of it, whereas now I've got to this time to stabilise myself yes. with what's important around me. I've do, do you understand where I'm coming yeah, from? And that's absolutely. where I'm at now. Mm-hmm. But going back to that, and then I, I was with Enzo Bingham for 10 years. Do you know what I mean? He, he turned me over pro and I went to prison. Yeah. I lost interest after that, do you know what I mean? And, but that's yeah, life. Big Bingham, mate. Yeah. Big left hook on it. Big him, left hook, that was it, man. Bingo, on him, and yeah. that's a lot of stuff we, we worked on. Yeah. And because I was light middle, sitting at the light middle, he had high hopes for me at that time. So I looked at Ensley, even though I had my own father, Enzo Bingham for me was a father figure to me. Yeah. He knew me inside out. When I got out of jail, I went back to Wensley and he said, right, we're going for it, Dean. And, you know, we, we had, I think, about 12 to 18 months of hardcore training. You know, we were sparring, we were travelling all over the country. We'd I was going to stop you a little bit there, brother, because I wanted to get into that a little bit. We will, we will get to that, what you're yeah. saying, brother. What, what, is, what I'm interested in, mate, is <clears throat> first time you went away, you know. Oh, when I went to jail the first time. Where were you at? Were you fighting at this time? You know, had you started fighting as a youngster by this yeah, time? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Taking it seriously by this point? No, I never, do you know what I said, Danny? I never, you see what it was, when we was boxing in the amateurs, we used to go to the, you go to Mellons in Garton. So obviously the boxing show every Wednesday, every Saturday. So at that time, you don't take it serious because you're young, you're naturally fresh. I mean, look, I used to smoke weed all through routines. scenes. Yeah. Do you know I did? So I didn't take any of it seriously, it was just part of it. something not, not natural because I was great, you know, it weren't because of that, because I weren't great, but what I'm saying is I was just the same as everyone else. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm not going to say names, but there's some elite fighters there that I was on the amateur squad with, and yeah. it was all getting stoned and so forth, you yeah. know what I mean? And Yeah, I was boxing at that time, and then when I went into jail, believe it or not, I went to what it announced, now I was this cocky kid to other kids, do you know what I mean? I had a big group of friends though, because I was a likeable guy when I was younger. Confident. I was confident, but then, I wasn't, because when I landed in jail, I went to Warrington House, you know, when, they, when you're in Warrington House, I'm thinking, this is YR. yeah, this is Young Offenders, yeah. it's in, uh, in Warrington, so it's like a, what they do at Warrington House, you're, you're banged up, but it's more like a secure unit, where they'll take you out, you go fishing, you play football, do a bit of rugby and stuff like that. Yeah. Was it really discipline? I don't really know, because of, cause I, because of the way my mum and father broke up, no one could discipline me, so in terms of, when it comes to discipline, I had no fear. You know, so when my mum moved on with my sister's dad, he tried to discipline me, it didn't go to a good start. You know, I was trying to have a punch it with a grown man at this point. And yeah. the gym and that yeah. was, you know, it's life. Yes, mate. Um, so when I went to jail now, I was, I'm not gonna, I'll be, first time I went in, I was a bit within myself. The confidence had gone, cause it's all new to me now. I mean, I went in at 14. There's lads who've been in and out of here from the age of 12, 13. 
you know what I mean? And like, you know, going back to like the Jamie Bulger killers, they was in there when I was in there right. at this point, you know what I mean? And uh -huh. so for me, that was a big world. You know, there was lads in there because I wasn't a big lad growing up, you know, and there was lads in there and I had a bit of an ego in there. And, yeah, I got into a few scrapes and I tried to hold my own and I got I got shown levels. Yeah. I'm 14 years of age, you know what I mean? I'm not going to say I went there as a big man because I didn't. Mm -hmm. But after a few weeks, I just adapted to it and it was just a way of life. Now, I was in there the first time, I got four months. Yeah, obviously, for twat, you know, taking out guns, consent, robbing yes, a car. Man. So I'm in there now for like four months, so you do eight weeks. And it was the longest eight weeks in my life. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But. All you want to do in there, because you're restricted at a young age, you just want to get out. And you can't get out, and that's a frustrating thing, you know what I mean? And I always said when I come out, I never wanted to go back. But then life gets a grip here, and that was the... And then going back to like, so I'm out now. Uh, I went to a, I went to two high schools. But I'm too rogue for schools now, so I went to this place called Meadow. It's where the naughty kids go. Do you know what I mean? I, I didn't make it once. I, yeah. I never went. I uh -huh. just dropped out, you know what I mean? And yeah. And that was and that was it, but they were regret it well known because the life experience I got back then from a young age. They didn't give me up growing up now, they gave me up from where I am now to look back. Yeah. I didn't see any of it and understand it. Even in my early twenties didn't understand it. You just yeah. don't care. it's not that you don't care. You know it's Yeah, I think re regret's a word, you know, I, I don't really like and I don't use myself because yeah. you might look back and think if you could change things, if we all had that magic wand, mate, and we could go back and change them, mate, we would. But to live in regret, mate, especially the life experience you get, mate, I've done some bad things, we all have. Yeah. Real yeah. bad things, dark things, you know, and y you learn from them, you know, I know it's not yeah. nice, but you can't live in that regret, mate, you know what I mean? You've got to you've got to treat this as experience, you've got to yeah. learn from your mistakes, and you've got to adapt, you know, and overcome and change things for the future, you know, so regret, mate. Yeah, I'll never live, well, yeah. so like I said, I had a, from, so for them, me getting to the, the age of, 17 you know i'm out working you know i'm working all different kind of jobs and getting by and doing my little things on the side and that but working has always been something that's inbred in me so all the bad things i was doing on the side you know i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna sit here and say certain things but robberies and stuff like that that's what was part of the environment i was in yeah you know, do you know what i mean it was yes, part mate. of what was involved in was it a main man out of the team no it wasn't at that time i was a sheep i was part of the team i was one of the boys but it was just something i was more involved in to the extent where if I would have stabilised myself, my life probably would have progressed at a different rate. If I knew, obviously, if you knew then what you knew now. Yes, man. Then I got to 20, so I met my oldest daughter's mum. We had a great relationship. We're only young, well, three years I was with her, and my oldest daughter was born. But just before she was born, I was in town, city centre, and some lads have come up and he's dropped a phone on the floor. My cousin's picked the phone up. I've cracked him. He was out of order for what I'd done, you know. Mm -hmm. That is it, things like that I regret, you know what I mean? I've done worse yeah. things than that in my life, you know what I mean? But that I just regretted it because the lad had dropped his phone, he put a bit of an altercation in, I didn't regret it at the time. Yeah. So all the I've cracked this kid, all the police have just turned up, literally it's under the cam knocking boots in town, there's a big ball camera, so the, the police have come, the guy's, he's out, he's kippered now. I'm walking off thinking the big man of shades have come, we've all been grabbed. We've all had to stand under this camera to point out which one it was. It's not us, it's not us. I'm arrested now, they've picked me out, you're in the back of the van. They drove me to Bootle Street Police Station, so I'm sat in the van, and it's come on the radios, the assault on Market Street in Manchester, uh, the victims died. So now I'm in the van now, and you know, I'm, it's a heart switching moment, so I'm sat in the van thinking, fucking hell, my mares fell off. Yeah. But them time there, you've got to remember, I'm pissed up and fucking I've had a knee, like you do in town, and everything, I don't care how hard you are, when you're in that situation for that split second, yeah. it hits you. Course it does. So I'm sat there now, the door's open, the, the, so I'm outside the police station, the cop has opened the back door outside the police station. I said, yeah, mate, you know, you know, I've been, every time I've been arrested, I've never really give out to the police, there's no point, you know what I mean? I've been roughed up on that a few times, but there's no point giving out to them, they've got you, you've got to take it on the chin. Of course, mate. So I've said to the cop, I said, is that my assault on Market Street? And he's gone one minute and he's shut the door. So my ass has dropped even more now. You know, I'm mm. fucking, yeah. it's a murder charge. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm fucking 21 years of age at this point. He's come back, he said, no, that's not your assault, that's someone else. And I'm just like, Phew. Yeah. Do you know what, it's fucking ass, it is an ass twitchy moment. Yes. So anyway, I've been bailed. I've gone to the concert, I'm not understanding, because the lad's not put a statement in this guy, he just didn't want nothing to do with it. But the way they read it out in court, he was in hospital for so long and he had X amount of time a brain scan because he had it hit the floor and all that. But at that point now, because I've not done been because it wasn't the murder charge, what I thought it was suspect of it was another assault. When I'm in court, I've got the arrogance again. 
you know, like I'm, I'm not arsed, you know what I mean? I'd been in court a few times after I'd been in jail and I got like community service, you know, for like a, one was a commercial burglar, I cut my finger on the window. I got it. So because I'd got community service and I'm thinking, I'm not going to jail now. Yeah, suspended sentences. Suspended and, and all that stuff. Anyway, I've gone, I've gone there and I've, I've ended up getting him. They said, they said, I've given you a 12 month sentence because you've gone guilty. And they've given you six months. So now I'm back in jail again. But remember, I've not been in jail now for the while. Yeah. Now I'm 21, I've landed in big boy jail. Man's jail. Yeah, man's jail now, but they sent me to Forest Bank. So I'm in Forest Bank now, and for me, when I've gone in there, I've seen virtually everyone I know. It's a local at that time. Yeah. So when I've seen everyone I know now, it's that jail didn't phase me again. It was just a frustration of I'm used to getting up and go again. So it's, mm-hmm. it's back to having that. You're in a prison routine, but it's still like a youth club, if you know what I mean. It's I know but, exactly what you mean. Yeah, and, exactly. And I, I still couldn't adapt to it. So it's like, it's not that I couldn't handle the jail. I was just used to being free again. So I'm only in there now, so I've done 12 weeks. Got out and I made my little girl was born, literally. So I've been out two weeks. When I got out, I got gate arrested for another um, commercial burger it was. So pretty much we had ram raided this shop, town centre in Salem, robbed all the Armani and Jack Jones, it was years ago, robbed all the clothes and that. Got gate arrested on that and an assault. So I'm in the police that when you get gate arrested, I don't know about now, but when you got gate arrested, you, you had, they had to give you, I think it was 24 hours grace, you was allowed to gate arrest you and then bail you to go back to court. Yeah. So now my ass is switching out to this. I don't care, send me back to jail, but don't let me miss my daughter being born. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's gate arrest for something that happened in prison? No, 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 it was a crime. From prior? From prior, but yeah. it, it caught me in jail yes, for his yes. DNA. Uh-huh. So I've got out now, and obviously I've gone there, and um, my solicitor's, my solicitor's known me from a young age, and she basically put a good account in there and said, look, if you go guilty to the assault, the assault's been thrown out, they've, they're not gonna pursue it, the statement's been withdrawn. Obviously we managed to, someone had spoke to him and said, look, you better foot that one off kind of thing. So that had been withdrawn. They'd done me for the commercial burglar, and I got community service again, which was the best time in my life where, you know, because I, I didn't want to miss my little girl, because the day my little girl was born, he broke my heart with happiness. I'd never cried so much in my first born child, and you know what I 